Welcome to the Inspired Creative, the podcast for people who need a little help getting inspired or staying motivated to explore their creative side. My name is Paula Castle, and I am super excited today because I have a very special guest with me. It's Wendy Tree. Say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. There we go. <laughs> Wendy is a professional dancer and choreographer and one of my very good friends, and I am super excited to have her here on the podcast with me. I'm happy to be here. I am so glad that you're happy because honestly, <laughs> I was a little nervous to ask you. Cause, what? Why? Because you're like super cool. Oh come on! No, she is. Okay, I'm the biggest geek ever. You wouldn't I know. Which what I to tell see you her. continually, which I, is why we get along. Yeah, but I still don't believe you. Yeah, I don't know why. Because you should know. Because I well know enough. you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, everybody, if you've never heard of Wendy, you've got to go check her out. She's super awesome. She's super cool. She's beautiful and talented and amazing. And like I, I said, she's a dancer and a choreographer. We'll get into all of the other things that she does. <laughs> but before we get into all of that, we like to start every episode with a quote. Today's quote is by Harvey McKay, who said, One surefire way to stay creative, force yourself to learn something new. And I really love this quote. And I'm so glad that you picked it. Wendy picked it, by the way. Uh, we were talking about topics and we were going through ideas. And she's like, I want to talk about learning new things. Because I think a lot of times as creative people, um, we forget that learning is part of the process. And we never really get to stop learning. Because mm -hmm. as soon as we stop learning, um, we have limited ourselves and boxed in what we're capable of doing. So let's start with just the basics of learning. And guys, forgive us. We know there's a lot of extra sound happening. We're not in our usual spot for recording today, so forgive us for the little noises in the background. It should die down over time. Um, but we didn't want to miss our window to record, so we apologize. But let's talk about uh, your dance experience. When did you start to dance? How old were you? What did you start with? Where did you go? Walk us through step by step all of the dance that you do and, and how long you've been learning. OK, so step by step. I started when I was, I want to say, around 10, 11-ish. Mm -hmm. But, and the only reason why I started was because my sister was dancing. And my sister was like a role model to me. So whatever she did, I wanted to do. Right. Whatever she said, I believed in. I was so gullible, you know, I'm still kind of. <laughs> but, you know, whatever my sister was doing, I wanted to do as well. Um, so around 10, I, I remember my first class. And I went for like a semester. It was once a week, one of those kind of like, you know, kids' classes. I think it was jazz. Um, but it was nothing serious at all. It was a cute little thing. And then I stopped for a couple of years. And then I started back, I think, when I was 13 at a different place. So where I grew up, they had these kind of like a youth center where they would offer different classes. Um, so there was vocal classes, there were dance classes, there were um, drama classes, stuff like that, and you know, little cute little cafe, because it was in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. um, so I started going there once a week, again, because my sister was going there, so I said, that's cool, I want to go too. And so I started going, taking class once a week. Now, there it was hip hop. And so I started taking it once a week, but I, the more I did it, the more I loved it. Mm. And so me and then a few of my friends there, we were like, you know, these <laughs> little ignorant kids. We're like, let's start a dance crew because we're the coolest kids, <laughs> which I really wasn't. I was like a quiet little mouse that would be in the corner. Uh -huh always forgotten about like nobody knew that I existed like I was like I that that's so hard oh my to gosh. believe because you're like if you ask as Tooney watch watchers tell me confirm what I say I was literally I would talk like this because I was really scared oh my god yeah and you know everybody was like Wendy who Wendy oh is Wendy here I don't know oh maybe she's and now you know it was just I was the one that you would kind of like search out to like finish your homework <laughs> okay, I was the one who would finish homework, and I am. I don't. I don't understand this because seriously, you're like a, you have like a spotlight on oh, you no. everywhere you go, and I don't know how you blossomed into who you are. But I'm super jealous. But anyway, it was God. You, that's that's really what it was. Amen. But um, yeah. So we started this dance crew, and then so we started having our own practices outside of that once a week class with mm -hmm. the teacher that we had. The teacher was great. She taught us hip hop, so she would teach us different foundational styles within hip hop. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we started dancing more and more. We started performing with our little crew and we thought we were, you know, the best thing ever on planet Earth. But it was good because like we were young kids, you know, young teenagers, 14, 15, 
and we would go do these performances and they would pay us a lot of money. So we would go and buy new outfits for the dance performances. We would go and have dinners together. So, you know, it, it created a really fun environment to dance in right. and to develop as a dancer. Now, there wasn't really much growth in the sense of like, wow, now I'm training like professionally, not at all. It was like a fun little thing. Yeah, But because um, you were still a kid. Exactly. But we started getting a lot of performances and a lot of job offers. And then we went on tour with this like huge dance company because they wanted us on board on their tour. And so, it, you know, we just got a lot of offers, which is what blew our egos up so much. Right, of course. Um, <laughs> but it really was a hobby because I still had to be in school and study uh -huh. and you know since I'm Chinese it's like my parents were like um you're, you're gonna, gonna be an study. engineer yes you know if or a I, doctor exactly lawyer you know choose from any of the above <laughs> software engineer computer science I don't know pick and choose but dancer no way but eventually so after I graduated graduated high school I really wanted to dance and a friend of mine was dancing here in New York and I had come to visit him and her, it was two of them, and I fell in love. I said, you know what, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I never thought pursuing dance would be an, a possibility. I just never thought it was possible because obviously what I grew up in mm -hmm. was like, if it's not a nine to five, super high-end office job, then right. there's no way for you to make a living and it's, mm -hmm. it's hopeless. Mm -hmm. And so I never really wanted to pursue it because I just didn't think that it would ever end up well. But then when I came here to visit, I just, I thought it looked like so much fun. And I always love traveling. I've always loved it. And it's, you know, I blame my parents. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I blame my parents because we would travel a lot growing up. And right. so because of them, I grew up traveling, so I love traveling. And so, you know, I wanted to go explore after I graduated high school. And so I came here. I, I told my parents, I said, all right, I'll come for six months and then I'll come back to Sweden to study like at the university. And that's how they agreed on letting me go. Mm -hmm. Those six months turned into a year. And then the only reason I went back to Sweden was really because I wanted to save up more money to come back to New York and really train. And so when I trained here in New York, it was really mostly ballet, contemporary jazz. So going from only hip hop, mm -hmm. now I was training really only ballet. I would take a few hip hop classes here and there, mm -hmm. but my main focus was all the classical styles, which is really what you need. If you want to work professionally as a dancer, right. you need to be versatile, one. And then two, unless you're like super duper crazy, ridiculously talented at that one skill, that that's where you'll get all of your work from, then you, you, you have to learn different styles, you know, because you want to be that dancer that they hire that is able to do this, that, and the third, mm -hmm. and then is able to pull that off and pull that off without them having to hire all these extra dancers. Right. And so the more versatile you are, the better it is. Right, because the more you can do, the more they can use you for, and exactly. the more valuable you become. Exactly. So are you still taking classes? Are you still learning? Are, you still, are there styles that you want to explore that maybe you've never explored yet? There are definitely styles I want to explore that I have yet to, which recently I picked up breakdancing again, oh, wow. which is something that I did a little bit of uh -huh. back, like way back when, but never really got into it personally. I just had a lot of friends that were breakdancers. Mm -hmm. And so we would go with them everywhere to these battles, to ciphers, to competitions. We would go everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I was in that environment a lot, but me personally training breakdancing, not very much. But now, you know, for more reasons than one it's kind of been brought back into my life and so I'm training that which is really fun and something that I've always wanted to learn is partnering so all those like salsa um, tango uh, all these partner dances I've always like I'm like oh that looks like so much fun but I've never done it never trained never took any classes how do you find because you're also a choreographer I, yes. I know that you, you you choreograph for your, your, your group you choreograph for the church you you know every time I turn around you're you're working with somebody doing something. It's kind of amazing. Um, but how do you find inspiration to go out and basically, because choreographing dance is making something out of nothing. How does that tie into learning new skills? I think as any type of creative artist, mm -hmm. you have to be open to being inspired by everything. It yeah. cannot just be, well, I'm a dancer, so I'm going to be inspired by other dancers, which of course is amazing, but as regardless of what kind of art form you're working with, I think it's important to be inspired, to being open for different 
channels. Right. You know, that you're inspired by a song, you're inspired by instruments, you're inspired by your environment, mm -hmm. you're inspired by people that just in general aspire to be something. That right. for me is always, it pushes me because I see people's drive, people's motivation, and that's what pushes me to go harder. And I think regardless of what you do, it's so important to be inspired by everything and anything, but yeah. you do have to have an open eye for it because I can easily say, well, I don't feel like it today. And so I'm just like, I'm just stuck. And then you've made up your mind that you're stuck and then you're going to stay stuck. As opposed to if you say, you know what, you know, there are colors in this room. Okay. How can I move with these colors? Right. What can I play with? What can I use? What can I add on to my craft? You know, cause you can always change things around. There's no set way to do it. There's no right or wrong. Yeah. And so that's the beauty of any art, I think. So if, because there's no right or wrong, there are no limits to what you can do. Now it's up to you to like make it colorful and make it fun because once you start doing it, then you'll start getting inspired. Right. You just have to take those few first steps, which in the beginning might be hard. Like I remember for a period of time, it was hard for me to find inspiration. One, because I wasn't taking as many classes. Mm -hmm. So you're getting less influence. Right. And you're then learning two, less even. Exactly. I'm yeah. learning less, which means I have less to pull from. Mm -hmm. It's like it all falls into one big pool. Now, if that pool isn't, you know, constantly active you have less and less to pull from but and then there was the thing of music because for me if i'm not inspired by the music that i'm dancing to that's one of the biggest 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 main things if a song is inspiring to me i can move to it forever right. but if i can't find the right music it's like it's hard for me to feel the want to want to move and to want to dance and people say well you're a dancer you should be able to dance to anything which yes is true Especially if you want to work as a dancer, you better sell that. Whatever it is <laughs> that you're hired to do, and if, even if it's like a, a super, like, you know, if it's a song that you dread and you just can't stand, you have to sell that, you know, right. if you're working as a dancer. But if you're creating something on your own, you want to be inspired by the music. So for us, there was a period of time I just, I couldn't find music that inspired me. So that was really, really hard. That was a big challenge. And it kind of stop me from choreographing for a long period of time one because the more i got into that rut the less i started searching for music so i just stopped looking for good music yeah you know and so because i just got tired of it i was like you know what it's not that deep i can go and do other things and so i started doing a lot of the of other things that weren't dance related but then now i look back at it and i said you know what these other things that i've been learning mm -hmm. has actually now is inspiring me to dance again uh, and so it just comes full circle, but you do have to allow it to. Yeah, yeah. Have so. you ever had like something that you've wanted to try, wanted to do, but it was a little scary? Within dance or just in life? Well, I don't know. Well, if you have a dance anecdote, that's perfect, but anything in life it will work. Because um. I think a lot of times people are afraid to learn because they're afraid yeah. to try something new. And I yeah. told the story in one of my earlier episodes about how um, I, I ran away from Zumba classes for a very long time because <laughs> I can't dance to save a life. Like, I can literally go back and forth. Like, you know, that's a it. strong two-step. Uh, not even a strong one. <laughs> Mostly kind of on beat until I lose it. And then I'm like, hold on, hold on. Let me find it again. Okay, we're good. Like, I'm not, I'm not a dancer. I just, I'm not. And it's okay. I'm all right, right with that. Right. You're <laughs> wonderful at many other things. So, but, hey, listen. But the day if came I when have... I was like, all right, I'm going to have to walk into the Zumba class. And it turned out, even though it was scary, it yeah. ended up being a lot of fun. Yeah. And it turned out I, I can be a bad dancer there. And that's right. fine. And that's okay. It's not really dance. You know, it's okay. <laughs> Nobody cares if, I, if I'm off beat or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, I think a lot of times people are afraid to try new things or yeah. even learn new things mm -hmm. because it can seem overwhelming. Yeah, I agree. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Probably many times, one, because they don't want to feel like an amateur at anything. That's yeah. always like, it, you know, it kills your ego like nothing else. And if your confidence level already isn't at the very best, like if your self-esteem isn't at the top, you already have this like you always beat yourself up and you, up over things and you're hard on yourself mm -hmm. to start something brand new that you suck at might not be the easiest task but and then another thing just like you mentioned i think many people just care too much about what other people think uh -huh. which really in a group class setting nobody's looking at you nobody but in your mind you think that they do and then even in embarrassing situations you think that oh god now i made a big fool of myself but 
people are kind of selfish in life <laughs> and in the world, so they don't really care about if you embarrass yourself. And even if they do, then they're not then they're not worth your time. Right. If they're that attentive to your mistakes and to how you look, then clearly they're not worth your time. Like, right. you know, it's just people that you really shouldn't be caring about. Um, I had a period of time where I had to accept looking like a crazy fool in class because, like I said, growing up, I only did hip hop. Mm -hmm. Now, starting taking ballet and contemporary was a big challenge because your body isn't used to it. So I didn't have the flexibility like many other dancers that started stretching when they were like four or five years old. Right. And so, and we would, um, the mentors that taught me always said, if you look good in a class, then you, that's not the class you need to be in, you know, because then you've already, already mastered that. That's so a really good So why point. are you there? I like that. Yeah. They're just like, why would you, sp why would you waste your money taking a class that you already know how to execute? And why would you learn from a teacher that you have already learned from? You should be, you should be in those classes where you look crazy because so that's where you seek have. Seek out something that's going to challenge you. Exactly. Seek out the things that you don't know mm -hmm. because that, that's where you have space to grow the most. Mm -hmm. That's where there is enough room for you to explore and play and fall flat on your face and then get back up again because one, it builds character. That's what they always say. It builds character. It builds that, okay, no, I'm going to push through. I'm going to push through. I'm going to push through because then when you go back to class that you do know, you'll be able to push to the next level and you will be able to raise the bar in a class where you are more familiar mm -hmm. because you've pushed yourself in a setting where you're not comfortable. Right. And so... They said, regardless of where you are, you can never stop being a student, ever, That's true. ever, ever, ever. Because the moment you do, just like you said, you you will limit yourself and you'll be boxed in. And then that's it. That's where you'll end up. It, that reminds me of a story that has nothing to do with creativity, <laughs> but I'm going to tell it anyway. Yes. Uh, I remember when I was in um, junior high and high school, right? Um, I went to a, a private school and they had, I started going in sixth grade and it went all the way through uh, the end of high school and they had separate softball teams and I always played softball. My dad's really big into baseball. Oh, nice. So my brothers played baseball, I played softball. And you know, we did t-ball and whatever when we were kids. And then I got into junior high and I was on the junior high team and I was really good comparatively speaking to the other nine girls that we had there. It was a really small school. I'm not patting myself on the back. I just happened to be one of the kids who knew how to play. You mm -hmm. know, that it wasn't impressive, yeah. right? But I was used to being the best. Yeah. And then I went to ninth grade. All the same people I already knew, mm -hmm. new team, high school team. So now instead of being the oldest, I'm the youngest. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how, when did I get so bad at this? Yeah. Like, I really, really suck. Like yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't hit the ball as hard, or I didn't yeah. go as far. I didn't, I wasn't. My batting average went down. I felt like I couldn't chase the balls down the way I used to. Everything was faster. I, I, w I felt slower, and yeah. I was like really, really defeated for mm -hmm. most of the season. And then there was one game that the junior high kids were playing against a school that was seven. 8th and ninth graders so they said to make it fair mm -hmm. if you have ninth graders who want to play you can bring them with the junior high kids so I went with the with the kids from junior high yeah and I was like my god when did they get so slow <laughs> my god well, it was like playing the game in slow motion yeah. I didn't the competition I didn't realize how much I was improving because I, mm -hmm. I was competing at a much higher level than exactly. I was used to until I went back with the kids who I'd played with the year before mm -hmm. and was like, oh, wow, it's a world of difference. Yeah. And I think sometimes when we're in the, the moment, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and we're in the process of learning something and really challenging ourselves, it can be hard to see the progress. Yes, it, absolutely. And it's hard. Like, my teachers always told me, take a level... Like, if you're a beginner, you should be taking advanced beginner classes mm -hmm. because then you're surrounded by people that are good, mm -hmm. that are better than you, mm -hmm. but you'll get to learn because you see and you get to observe how someone that is better than you will do certain things. Right. And it was so hard because, like I said, when we when it would come to the stretching portion of class, everybody would be in their splits with their backs and stomachs everywhere and just <laughs> legs everywhere. And then you would have me, you know, everybody would be on the floor and I'm basically standing up because my legs don't go anywhere. Or like the teacher would teach a combination and the teacher would teach it really fast. You know, they would just lay out a million A counts and all the people would pick it up like nothing to the point where the class would be moving. They're doing the choreography. Let's say they're moving this way and I'm over here like going against the whole, <laughs> like they would be coming this way and I'm like, oh God, they're chasing me. It was bad. It was really bad. But again, it was because you're around people that are better than you. But it, it what's it called? It quickens your 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 teaching and not yeah. your teaching your learning process. Yeah. Because if you're constantly around people that are, if not on the same level as you or 
on a lower level than you, yeah, you might look the best. You mm -hmm. might be the best one in that class. But what good is it really doing you? Right. You Especially know? if you're there to learn. Exactly. Yeah, and to improve. And I think that that's um, an important thing because I think it's one thing when we're going in and we know we don't know what we're doing mm -hmm. and we're learning from scratch. It's a very different thing when we're walking into something that we feel like we should be good at. Yeah. Right? Oh, like, man, that really is defeating. Like, it is. Like, like, I'm supposed like to know punch this. In the gut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then how satisfying is it when you get to it? That's what, yeah. like, why it's fun to learn is because once you do learn and then you know how much work you put into it, it is fulfilling. It yeah. really is. And then it opens up a whole new world of things that you're capable of, mm -hmm. that you were never capable of before. Yeah. You can actually do things. Exactly. Like, have you ever, like, seen somebody else do something or heard somebody else do something you're like, God, I wish I was that good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> like, man, if only I time. had that skill. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, you know, they started off somewhere, too. That's true. You know, they didn't start off at, 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 at unless they're like one of those four-year-old child protégés. Oh, just, my gosh. I was watching a video today of a little four-year-old playing the drums. I'm like, that's just not fair. Yeah. He was too, he was better than no. most people I know who are in their 30s. I'm like, no, it's just not right. I know. And but sometimes... It, if you're not that person, then that means you started somewhere. <laughs> exactly, which is really 99% of every like of the whole world. Yeah, that's the reality of, of life. I know, man. You can't just be. I get very impatient to yeah. learning. I I'm, I I don't always embrace the process because I'm like, okay, well, it needs to happen now. Right. You know, I need to be in a split right now. But the thing is, you would never do that to somebody else. That's true. We only do it to ourselves. Yeah. Why is that? It's so strange. I don't know. It's not fair, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I feel like artists in general are very self-critical. Yeah. You know, they're always aiming for what's next, what's next, what's next. Which is a good thing, but not to the point where you're like not embracing the things that you have learned and being able to pat yourself on the back and say, you know what, I did do that. Yeah, I think a part of that is because art comes from such a uh, vulnerable personal place. Yeah. Like if, if it's not coming, it, it's, if you feel like you're doing, it's a part of you. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, whether you're writing or, or you know, singing or dancing or even knitting or making yeah. quilts like this, this is a piece of me it's an expression yeah. of something that's inside of me so yeah. it, it's it's hard to look at that and see because we true. always see the flaws always and then we want to like hide the flaws <laughs> or destroy the flaws <laughs> or mention them before anybody else can mention them so that we like right? they know that we know right? that we suck it's okay i know that's i suck so it's really right. all right that's true we, we do, do it all do the that. time yeah, all the time <laughs> or at least i do that all the time same here Okay, Wendy, sorry, we had a little bit of technical difficulty, but we're back. Um, so if you had one piece of advice, one takeaway that you would want everyone to remember from this whole conversation, what would it be? For me, it would be to keep pushing. Yeah. Keep pushing and never give up. As cliche as it may sound and as corny as it may be, and as common as you hear that expression, but just don't give up that's really the key, mm. you know, because you do have to push through. And I think it's hard for a reason. I think you get, you just have to push through the insecurities. You have to push through your own thoughts. You have to push through that fear of, you know, caring about what other people are thinking about you or saying about you. It doesn't matter because mm. you know that at the end of the day, you're doing it for a reason. And so you have to remember that reason. Yeah. And so that's what's really going to keep you going. And you have to keep going. Yeah. Your breakthrough is around the corner. Right there. It's right there. You just got to make it around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. I guess for me, I think I would say um, my takeaway from this is that learning has a value yes. that we can't underestimate mm -hmm. and that we have to make it a priority if yes. we're serious about our creativity. If we want to thrive, mm -hmm. we have to feed our creativity somehow. And yes. one of the easiest, most fundamental ways of doing that is making sure that we're constantly learning something new. All right, so Wendy, if everybody wants to follow you and your amazing <laughs> exploits so they can see how cool you are, oh, where can people find you on social media? Um, on Facebook, it's Wendy Tree, W-E-N-D-Y-T-R-I. And then on Instagram is at Wendtree. So same, it's W-E-N-T-R-I. Okay, so the D-Y is off of Wendy, so it's yes. Wen Tree. Wen Tree. Okay, and when I post on Facebook and Instagram, I will tag you in it so everybody can find you. I hope that's okay. Yes. And if you guys want to reach me, um, the podcast, we're at um, Instagram and Facebook and email at the Inspired Creative Pod. Um, it's the Inspired Creative Pod on Instagram and Facebook and the Inspired Creative Pod at Gmail as well. So please feel free to reach out, like, 
uh, follow, subscribe, do whatever. Um, and if you're catching this on Apple Podcasts or on Stitcher or anywhere that you happen to be listening to, to podcasts, if you found us there, if you could do me a big favor, obviously I want you to subscribe so that you can get the new episodes that come out every week. But also, if you could take a second to, to rate and review the show, that would be really helpful. It helps in the algorithms. It helps other people find us. Um, but we just want to, to spread the word. We want to help encourage as many people as possible. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for staying and listening to the end. Wendy's clapping quietly so as not to ruin <laughs> things on the mic. Um, but thank you for caring. We love that, that so many people are listening and downloading and, and, and finding us. And feel free to shoot me a question. Feel free to, you know, make a, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. We want to get the feedback because we want to... We want this to serve you as much as as much fun as it is to sit and have these conversations because it yes. is fun. Um, we we want to give you the content that you're looking for. So thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next week. And until then, I just want to say, go out there, be creative, learn something new, and let's make this world a more beautiful place. Bye.